Uh, hello to everybody out in Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District. It's Congressman Jamie Raskin coming at you for my favorite time of the week, Local Hero. And do we have a splendid local hero for you this week? None other than the great Connie Morella, uh, who is my uh, pre-predecessor in office, who served as the representative from Maryland's 8th District from 1987 to, I believe it was 2003. And Connie uh, also then became uh, ambassador to the OECD at Montgomery College. She's been a professor and she's just been an absolute force of nature in our community for several, several decades. Um, she's a great mom, a great aunt, a great grandmother. Um, and uh, Connie um, has agreed to join as our local hero because this is Women's History Month and it's hard to think of anybody uh, who has figured more importantly in the women's history of Maryland's 8th Congressional District than Connie Morella. So Connie, thank you and congratulations for being our local hero this week. I thank you very much, Congressman. I'm highly honored and I have great respect and uh, admiration for the service that you've, you've rendered. Remember now, I'm a political junkie, so therefore I feel it's important that I watch what happens to, uh, to the uh, district, to the country, I think it was Yates who said that um, I was there to uh, wind the clock. I feel I have a commitment to watch it and hear it strike. And you're doing oh, that beautiful. So, thank you. Isn't that beautiful? Well, um, yeah, you know, you, you've had such a dazzling career in public life. I know when you first entered Congress, you went in with some extraordinary people, including the now speaker, uh, Nancy Pelosi. You were classmates, John Lewis, right? Amo Houghton. Fred Upton, um, and you were involved in passing some really um, cutting edge seminal legislation on the rights of women, the rights of children and families, opposing domestic violence. Talk, if you would, for a moment about some of the things you're proudest of that you participated in accomplishing when you were in Congress. Well, you know, as you know, Jamie, I started off uh, teaching at Montgomery College, and I became a member of the first commission for women, and that was back in the 70s. And um, uh, that's when I recognized the inequities that, that women faced. In fact, it was Lindy Boggs um, for whom we named our Congresswoman's Room, and we just recently celebrated the anniversary of it, who introduced the Equal Credit Act, and um, which gave women opportunities. But that's when I got involved on the first commission for women in Montgomery County and began to realize something needs to be done. So uh, as I would say to people, if you think it needs to be done, try to help do it. And so that's when I decided to run, ran for the state legislature and then ran for the federal Congress and was elected. And of course it was the women's movement that put the movement into me and I felt we needed to move these things ahead. Like you, I was fortunate enough to represent a district where the people are very intelligent, very engaged, very involved. And so I had the National Institutes of Health uh, as my constituency, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and the various very, you know, federal agencies that are critical, as well as the whole high tech community. Um, and um, so I began to realize what I could do to also bring equity for women. And I think one of the first pieces of legislation, it wasn't one of my first, but one that I think I would like to point out, indicated something I believe in, Jamie, and that is bipartisanship. To get something accomplished, you've got to have both sides working together. And that was the Office of Research on Women's Health at the National Institutes of Health. And who helped do it? Four of us met with Bill Robb, who was then the acting director, uh, and that was Olympia Snow and Barbara Mikulski, Pat Schroeder and myself. So we had bipartisan, we even had the bi- uh, uh, Camera. Yeah, right, exactly, <laughs> that were there. Um, and we realized at that time that women were not included in protocols, protocols or clinical trials and, because they were considered like little men, but we know the anatomy of women is quite different. And um, so we, um, we engaged with Bill Robb and others and we, we succeeded in getting the women, Office of Research on Women's Health included in the revitalization of the NIH bill. So from that time on, and it continues now, I'm still involved 
We still, we are now bringing women into the clinical trials protocols. We all know the difference it's made in everything, but it still has to continue to move ahead. And so we continue to watch that. In addition to that, I, I think people would recognize the Violence Against Women, Women Act with all its implications. Much of that happened with individual legislation, some that I worked on where this is something that needs to be brought into a collective picture. And that became an enormous piece of legislation mm -hmm. with bipartisan support. And I understand now it's finally been re, 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 re authorized as it needed to be. So along the way, it has adapted to uh, changes, uh, immigrant women being considered, uh, gay people being considered. And I think that's a, a great tribute to uh, what needed to be done. There are a lot of other areas too, of course. Yeah. Talk about. Uh, well, but, but what a remarkable thing to be part of that very first wave of changes, um, opening up the law in this direction. And uh, it makes me very proud to be able to uh, sit in this lineage of people who've represented uh, the extraordinary eighth district. It is the most educationally accomplished district in the country. We've got the highest levels of PhDs and doctorates and advanced training and so on. And um, it's a district, as you well know, that is deeply engaged with public policy, with government and with ideas and uh, learning. This is one reason we were so thrilled that we got to uh, name a public library after you. And everybody loves to go to the Connie Morella Library in Bethesda. But what's it like to drive by the, the Connie Morella Library when you're going out to eat or something? What's that like? Well, it isn't that I drive by the library, but I go <laughs> to the library and I have had some meetings there. And I'll just tell you something funny, Jamie. Um, this is a typical library, but they do all kinds of things there. They have the side rooms. I went to one not too long ago called Read to a Dog. I mean it. And they had people who brought their, there are like six people who brought their dogs in, well-trained dogs. And then six kids came with their book. One went to each dog and read to the dog. And then 15 minutes later, they went out. Another group came in. I want you to know there wasn't one dog that said to that child, you didn't pronounce that right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. A, a library. Well, you know, I, actually, quite seriously, I, am, I, I can't tell you how honored I am by that because the library is community. The library is nonpartisan. The library reaches out to people of different economic status, ethnic backgrounds. It brings people together. And so, it's also a, a place of romance, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody told you, yes, my husband, Tony, uh, uh, we went to Boston University where we met and the Boston Public Library wasn't very far. And after our first date, um, we met at the library. I remember it was a Saturday and he proposed to me. And so I, I must say, and it lasted. So uh, this is something about the staying power of libraries. And it's, also, a, it's a beautiful it was, story. It was also free. So he didn't have to spend any money. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a beautiful story. Um, and of course, um, you and Tony uh, had such a beautiful romance and marriage and the family you've created is uh, astonishing and um, it it has touched so many people and people in your family have touched so many people in so many different ways throughout Montgomery County throughout our district um, well Connie Morella uh, we could go on forever uh, and uh, you're such a, a treasure to us thank you for everything that uh, you have done and you continue to do for people in Maryland's eighth, for people in Maryland, for people across the country and uh, across the world. And thank you for your great leadership. And for all these reasons, you're our local hero. And if you want to say anything else, the floor is yours. I, I just simply want to say I'm very proud of the service that you have been providing in all ways, uh, legally, uh, ethically. You, You've shown great courage, Jamie. And if there's anything I can do, because I feel part of this greater community, I hope you will call on me. But it was an honor to uh, to be here with you. So carry on. Thank you, our dear Connie Morella, our local hero for this week. <laughs>